The basic and most common problem for the developers is to manage and secure the credentials and other application related secrets within their code when they are building cloud native mission critical applications. Although there could be a number of uses, but generally these credentials are used for authenticating the application to other cloud services and connectivity to the database. But that definitely makes the application vulnerable and pose a threat to security and the security team will never welcome it. Wouldn't it be great if the need for storing the credentials and other application secrets within the application could be wiped out, making the application more secure? Well, for that, managed identities are there to help. That makes your task easier and also helps to keep your security teams happy. Hi, my name is Neeraj Kumar and I'm super excited to be your instructor for this course. Stay tuned. Let's see the topics that we will be covering in this course. We will first try to understand the managed identities, followed by the types of managed identities available and their differences. We will also learn the benefits of using managed identities and finally we will see the managed identities in action where we will configure the managed identities for Azure resources and understand how secure connections are established. By the end of this course, you will have a solid understanding on managed identities and will be comfortable to use managed identities to keep your application code free from credentials and other secrets while working with other instances of Azure services that rely on Azure AD authentication and role-based access control. It is better to understand the managed identities with an example. Consider there is an organization, Cloudnext, which has a B2B business model and having multiple partners. The IT department at Cloudnext is planning on building a secure internet application on Azure to have an online presence in order to ease up and expand their areas and regions of business. As a first step, they create a blueprint of the application followed by the architecture. The solution looks promising with multiple features. A team of developers start to build the application modules and after four months time, all the modules of the application are complete. But before the application could be launched, it needs to pass through the security scanner in order to get the security team's blessing. The security team discovers that the passwords and other connection string secrets are stored in the configuration file within the application itself and in some other places within the code. The security team therefore raises a red flag and refuses to approve the deployment of the application to the production stating security reasons, which obviously is the right thing. This must have been planned. This was a clear miss by the development team and indeed needed to think through the alternate solution on how they can remove the secrets and credentials from within the application and still be able to securely connect to other Azure services and database to be used. They start to look out for any feature in Azure that could help them resolve their problem. This is when they come to know about Azure Key Vault. They were happy as all the application secrets and credentials could be stored and managed within the key vault and it can be accessed from inside the application to connect to other Azure services and database. It was definitely an improvement, but the application still needed a way to authenticate to Azure key vault to retrieve the keys and other secrets. It means that the application stores key vault configuration within the application. Now what? For such kind of security related issues, managed identities are the way to go. Simply put, managed identities help the development teams in completely eliminating the need to manage credentials and secrets within their code. Managed identities are basically Azure AD identities that can be created easily for Azure resources in order to allow these resources to connect with other Azure resources that support Azure AD authentication. In essence, managed identities are the service principle. The development team at Cloudnext discovers that they can get away with the credentials and secrets stored within their code and instead leverage managed identities to overcome such security issues. 
The development team makes all the changes and removes stored credentials and passwords and uses managed identities with Azure Key Vault. The application is again reviewed by the security team and this time everyone is happy and the security team blesses the application and gives a go ahead for the application to be deployed onto production so that CloudNext partners could easily and securely access the application. Managed identities are really very powerful as it levitates you from managing those identities and other overhead associated with credential management. The code remains clean and the Azure Key Vault can now be accessed without maintaining any configurations for the Key Vault within the code. Not just that, as I already mentioned, other Azure resources that support Azure AD authentication can now be accessed without having to store their connection string or other secret keys. For example, the application code can now access SQL database via the Key Vault or directly as it supports Azure AD authentication. These managed identities are of two types. The first one is the system assigned identities and the second one is the user assigned identities. Both of these identities come with their own positive and negative points, which we will discuss shortly as the differences between the two. Managed identities for Azure resources is the new name for the services formerly known as Managed Service Identity, MSI. So we just discussed about the two types of identities. One is the system assigned, the other one is the user assigned managed identity. Talking about the system assigned managed identities, there are Azure resources that allow you to enable a managed identity directly on a service instance. And when you enable a system assigned managed identity, an ID is created in the Azure Active Directory that is tied to the lifecycle of that service instance. So when the resource is deleted, Azure automatically deletes this ID for you. By design, only that Azure resource can use this particular ID to request tokens from Azure Active Directory. Whereas if we talk about the user assigned managed identity, you can create the managed identity as a standalone Azure resource. You can create a user assigned managed identity and assign it to one or more instances of Azure services. In the case of the user assigned managed identities, the ID is managed separately from the resource that uses it. Now let us talk about the differences. The first one being the system assigned managed identities are created as part of Azure resource like Azure VM, Azure SQL Server, App Services application and so on and so forth. Whereas if we talk about the user assigned managed identities, they are created separately as a standalone resource and then can be attached to one or more Azure service instances. Then in case of the system assigned managed identities, the life cycle of those IDs are dependent on the resource they are created with and are removed as the resource is deleted. Whereas if we talk about the user assigned managed identities, they need to be separately deleted as they are independent Azure resource and can be attached to one or more service instances. So they need to be deleted separately. Third is that for system assigned managed identities, they are tied up to a single Azure resource as they are created within that resource. If we talk about the user assigned managed identities, one ID can be attached to multiple Azure resources, right? And finally, if we talk about the system assigned managed identities, they are useful for workloads that require independent IDs. For example, an application that runs on a single virtual machine. Whereas if we talk about the user assigned managed identities, they are useful for workloads that run on multiple Azure resources or workloads which can share a single ID. So choosing between the two, whether you need a system assigned managed identity or a user assigned managed identity will obviously depend on the kind of requirement that you have. One very important point to keep in mind is that the managed identity, be it a system assigned or a user assigned. A managed identity is a special kind of service principle. Remember, I told you that sometimes back that are only used with Azure resources and the life cycle of the service principle corresponds to that of the managed identity. That is, the service principle is removed 
when the corresponding managed ID is deleted. So what benefits do you get when using managed identities? Obviously, the primary benefit is that you get rid of storing the credentials and secrets within your code. So the security is not a concern from that perspective. Simply put, you get improved security. If we talk about system assigned managed identities, they're not even accessible to you. That gives another benefit. For system assigned managed identity, you get rid of the overhead of managing the credentials as you do not have access to those secrets. Third is, you can use these managed identities to authenticate to any Azure resource that supports Azure Active Directory authentication. You just need to assign them the RBAC role on that resource. And this is what we will see in the demo so that it becomes crystal clear to you. And finally, there is no additional cost for using the managed identities. So it's a win-win situation for everyone and it's a success. On to the demo and here I am on my Azure portal. And the first thing we are going to do is to go to ATCSL managed identities, which is the app service. I already created an app service plan for this particular app service. I'll scroll down. And under settings, I'll click on identity. The first thing you notice here is we have two tabs. One is the system assigned and the other one is the user assigned. And these two are for the managed identities. So if you look at the status, it says off. So we will toggle the switch to make it on and then click on the save button. So once you click on the save button, it pops up a message saying that ETCSL managed identities will be registered with the Azure Active Directory. Simply meaning that a service principle will be created within Azure Active Directory. And once it is registered, this app service can be granted permissions for accessing any Azure resource that accepts Azure AD authentication. So we will click on yes, and it will take a couple of minutes to be deployed. Once done, you will see the object ID displayed, which is the service principle. So here you go, you will see the object ID from here. I can assign this identity a role, but we are not going to do it from here. Rather, we will go to the search bar and search for storage accounts. Click on storage accounts. And here I have ADCSL demo storage account already created. So I'll click on it and then I'll click on access control IAM. Once I'm there, I'll click on role assignments. And here you will see all the accesses that the storage account has. So if you look under contributor, you will find Stephanie Giral. Under user access administrator, we have Matthew Winters and Neeraj Kumar. So these are different people who have access to this particular storage account. Similarly, we will give access to the managed identity. We'll click on add and then click on add role assignments. Once we are there, we can choose one of the roles that are available. So I'll click on contribute and then click on next. Here I will choose manage identity for assign access to and then click on select members. You will notice that the subscription is already selected because I have just one subscription and under managed identity dropdown, I have the app service already listed because that is the system assigned managed identity that I want to give access to. And that is the only managed identity. So it is showing that to me. I'll click on the identity and then click on select. For the description, I can put anything, but that is not required for this demo. I'll click on review and assign and finally click on review and assign again. It will take a couple of seconds and this particular managed identities will be listed under contributor. So this is done and you can see ADCSL managed identity now has a contributor access to this particular storage account, which is ADCSL demo storage. I'll go back to the app services, click on it and then click on identity. What if you do not want to use this pass service to create an app services web app. Rather, you want to deploy your code as a separate web application within the virtual machines. And in that case, there can be more than one virtual machines having the same code behind the load balancer. That can be another scenario, right? In that case, the system assigned managed identities can work, but each virtual machine need to have their own managed identity 
and they both need to be given access to the storage account. Rather, the user assigned managed identities will work fine because in this case, I'll just create one managed identity and finally, I can grant it access in the storage account. So for that, we will go to the search bar again and search for managed identities. Click on manage identities and then finally click on create. Once you're there, choose the resource group. From the region, I'll choose East US because that is the closest location and it is the same as the resource group location. For the name, I'll put as ATCSL user identity and finally click on review and create. And after validation, I'll click on create again. It's a quick process and will be deployed quickly. So now as this is done, I'll click on the search box again and we'll search for virtual machines. So I have two virtual machines here. I'll just show it to you. So which is ATCSL VNet1 and ATCSL VNet2. I'll click on ATCSL VNet1 and scroll down, click on identity, go to the user assigned tab and here I need to click on add. And now as I already created the user assigned managed identity, I'll click on it, which is ATCSL user identity and then click on add. So this was a quick process again and we have the ADCSL user identity added as a user assigned managed identity for this particular VM. We need to repeat the process for our another VM which is ATCSL VNet2. So I'll click on it and again I need to go to identity, click on user assign and then click on add. Select the ID and then click on add again. Now as this is done, these two VMs can now access the storage account but before that we need to give this identity permissions within the storage account else it will not be able to access. So we will go back to the storage account, click on the storage account name, go to access control IAM and then click on add, add role assignment. From here I can choose contributor, click on next and again we will choose managed identity and then click on select members. I need to click on the drop down for the managed identity and now since I have the user assigned managed identity as well, so it is listed here. I'll click on it to select and then finally click on the select button. Once that is done, I'll click on review and assign and finally click on review and assign again. The user assigned managed identity now has the contributor access to this storage account and it will be listed under contributor as you can see from here. So that is how you use the system assigned and the user assigned managed identities. I hope you were able to understand what managed identities are and what are its types and benefits. And if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to motivate me to bring more such informative videos for you. Thank you so much for joining this course with me and until we meet next time, keep assuring.